Hi, Daniel. You okay? Hi. Can we start with uh, the boys who've been away on international duty, and specifically the the Wales lads and and Dan James? Obviously, huge disappointment for him and them last night. So, how do you pick them up for the game? Will you speak to them today? Have a conversation? Have you spoken to him yet? No, because uh, if you um, suffer such a disappointment, uh, you want to be a bit, a bit alone, and and you get so many um, hugs and 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 positive words, and uh, you can do without it. So at, at least I know this also from my from my playing time. So to leave them uh, also a bit bit alone uh, is also quite beneficial. They didn't arrive uh, yet because it was a long uh, night for them yesterday. And they they stayed in Cardiff to have a proper night and. Uh, they are on the way back right now and will return uh, just in a, uh, in a few moments. Obviously, just recovery for them today and also injury assessment. Yes, and then obviously also like uh, their experience led, they don't need too many uh, positive words from uh, from my side. Obviously, we will speak a bit uh, about the situation, but I also want them right now um, to focus pretty quick on on, uh, on uh, Leeds United. And we have a lot also to, to play for and to fight for and... Uh, perhaps also reason uh, in the end of the season to celebrate a bit, and they should take motivation out of this in order in order to put this into more energy uh, for for their club. And uh, so they are experienced. They know there are sometimes the uh, sun is shining in in sport, and sometimes you also suffer uh, difficult days when it's uh, when the wind is in uh, in your face. Obviously, uh, we would have been delighted for them if they would gone through uh, yesterday. Our fingers were crossed, but it's sport. Yeah, sometimes defeat also belongs uh, to to the sport, and for that, they are experienced enough. And I'm I'm quite sure. Um, yeah, pretty quick they will draw a line on that, and will keep going for us for Leeds United. You were in great form going into the international break. So how do you ensure that you maintain that momentum, especially over this Easter weekend with the quick turnaround and, and the two games coming up? Yes, the last uh, two weeks um, were difficult and challenging. Yeah? We don't have to sugarcoat it, if I'm, uh, if I'm honest. So first of all, a little break and a little rest was well-deserved after a great run of form and, and also much needed. Uh, it was great for, for me, my coaching staff, and also the staff to rest a little bit. Uh, but sadly, also just a chance for a handful of players because all the others were away on international duty. Lots of traveling, uh, lots of loads, also important games for them, lots of mental pressure. Um, it's never that uh, that easy. So the positive thing during the international break was that we are able to uh, have the time to um, give the surgery to uh, to Jorginho Rutter. Um, and uh, also to, um, because in the last weeks before the international break, he played the games and he was still terrific for us, but uh, he played with pain. So he had always pain when he had to sprint and was there with, uh, with shots and with, uh, with strikes. And uh, he was still there with many, many crucial moments. Um, um, but then it's also quite normal. You can transport perhaps an injury for a couple of weeks also to manage a load a bit in training. Uh, but you can't transport it over over months eh? because any at some point you will pay the price if you can't uh, train proper and you're just available for the game. So for that it was beneficial for him to have the surgery. He's uh, on the on the road back even today. He was already involved in bits and parts of of team training and uh, it looks looks uh, looks good. That was definitely a positive thing. Um, for all the others, it was difficult yeah? because last week we trained with uh, exactly. Uh, six uh, first team field players here uh, and this week so far with seven uh, uh, field players so uh, you can't really work on, on uh, team tactical behavior it's more like individual work a bit with a small group and um, it's then also a bit difficult to focus them on the on the games uh, on the on the next game um, we try to do the best with this small group in order to yeah put some proper shifts in and, and proper work but obviously when once uh, so many uh, players uh, are away on international duty. It's it's difficult. Um, the good thing is we were in red hot form and we are so long together. Yes, for Friday we just have to press the button and 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 be on it yeah, because it's difficult. Yeah, the the players are away for different um, different national teams and they play also different style of football. And then without one training session they have to play at Watford. 
it will be a tricky turnaround. We don't have to sugarcoat it. So the first thing is also to speak honest uh, about it, yeah, because the players who were involved um, yesterday in many, many minutes, they are just a few are arrived this morning, a few are arriving in this minutes, and a few will arrive later in the afternoon. But for them today, just recovery and um, yes, and assessment uh, is a topic. Yeah, a few injury concerns as uh, as well. And uh, yes, obviously we have them then together all back. The latest uh, will be Junior Firpo, who arrives tomorrow late morning. And then uh, more or less after lunchtime, we have a one training session, but the players who were involved in many minutes uh, yesterday evening, uh, they just can have an individual session. Otherwise they wouldn't be available for, for Friday. So we have to split the group means for several players, not one training session together together with us, and we have to play the game on uh, on Good Friday. Um, but that's reality. We have to we have to adapt to it, and and uh, hopefully, also the assessment is not too bad. There are a few injury concerns after after the games in the uh, in the recent uh, in the recent days. So for that, we will have to be there with some late calls. Also, to be smart, what we do in terms of not overloading them with too much information about Watford because of the mental pressure for them was, was difficult. Um, so it's, it's obviously it's also about three points uh, this weekend, but our red hot form is, uh, is not um, the case at the moment. So it's not crucial. It's crucial that we find a way, yeah, more or less to, to survive this crazy uh, fixture, uh, fixture uh, on, on a Good Friday with yeah, the best possible performance under the circumstances also to grind out the result. This is what we're trying to do and uh, we don't complain about the situation. We just have to name it and to be honest about it that it will be difficult and then try to find a way to adapt it and this is what we're trying to do. You mentioned the red hot form there, you're top of the table. Are you the team that everybody has to to beat now, do you think? Are you the favourites to get promotion to the Premier League? No, in because eyes. no, no, because Leicester has a game in hand. I expect them also to win points in the game in hand, and then they have the uh, the best possible option. So that's just a fact and just a reality. And um, again, so for the next for this weekend, uh, the games before um, are not important, yeah, because we play more or less uh, this weekend the two games, six points to play for the first game, Watford, uh, without one training session uh, with the team. Then obviously Saturday we'll have. Uh, recovery, and then we have probably one training session on uh, on Sunday, the only training session that we have uh, before the the game against against Hull. It's tricky, and for that we don't have to speak about the table right now or about which is a red hot form team. It's more like okay, you just have to concentrate on finding a way to be competitive again for these two games. Is what we're trying to do, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. Also, most of my plans uh, are available. So it depends on the. Uh, what happens in the next 48 hours, it depends on what happens in terms of assessment, and then we will see how we come through it. Yeah. Hi, Daniel. Hi. Um, you mentioned there uh, some players that are injury concerns for you going into Friday. Can I ask, do you know yet the extent of Conor Roberts? We saw him come off late last night. Wales. <laughs> no, not yet. There are a few concerns. Obviously, uh, Jorginho Ritter is one of the concerns uh, because he's on the good pass. Uh, he has... Um, joined uh, us today in parts of team training but was not able to train one time really a full session with the team so but there are still 48 more uh, hours and um, I'm carefully optimistic that he is uh, available to be in the squad and, and perhaps also available for some minutes we'll have to wait for the outcome uh, there are a few more concerns Conor Roberts limped off so uh, we're waiting for him to return and then to assess him I hope it's not too bad but uh, let's be honest if you limp out of the game then Normally, it's not that you're available uh, two days uh, two days later. Uh, so um, it seems to be a muscle injury, but we haven't assessed him, and we have to wait a little bit. Uh, and the same also for um, for Villignonto because he had some problems, uh, reported some problems with his hamstring after after his game. We have to wait for for the assessment uh, over the day. The same for uh, Ilya Gruev. He uh, reported um, problems with his ankle ligament uh, after after the Bulgarian game. Um, we have to wait for the assessment. So there are doubts uh, if they are available. You mentioned there the, the disappointment that no doubt the Welsh contingent of your squad will be feeling right now. We've seen this season the togetherness of this Leeds United squad. You say you'll give them some time. How beneficial will it be for them to have those players around them? Um, Priceless. It's priceless, yeah, because once once they come back, 
uh, it really feels like like the family, like being at home. And and even if you have suffer uh, some some difficult days, it's always good to have the family around and to be at home. And then you get some new energy, and yeah, you want uh, then to show reaction in a, in a proper way. But also, right now, it's important not to be overexcited too soon because the lads played 120 minutes or. Uh, Danny James, uh, yeah, a few minutes, a uh, few minutes less. But uh, Joe and and Ethan played one or twenty minutes. Right now is also to give them uh, some time uh, to recover and also to clear their head a little bit and not to to speak too early about what we uh, have to play for. So perhaps from tomorrow on, I will, I will start a bit. But it's it's important right now. Uh, that uh, they are also not burning like a candle from both sides. They need to clear their head a little bit and, and also to recover. And for that, not too much load and also no overload in terms of informations uh, for them uh, in the next two days. But it will definitely be beneficial that they are back home and back with their family. And yeah, in your family, you normally show your best performances and you're in the best mood. And I'm quite sure um, with this more like that they will feel the support, but uh, also that there are even many, many uh, important things to play for. And this is just football and uh, then we get along with it. It's obviously been a landmark season for Archie Gray. He was away with England's under-21s, scoring his first goal as well. The same can be said for Matteo Joseph. How pleasing was it for that? How pleasing was that for you to see those two prosper in those environments? Yes, there were also a few positive uh, things during this this international break. So, congratulations to 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 Archie. Um, yes, first appearance in the starting lineup for the under twenty one. Also, his first goal and good good assist was definitely good for him. I'm also pleased that he was not involved in each and every minute. So for them, for him, it was definitely a beneficial and really good uh, international break. Also for Matteo Joseph. He's, uh, there was good confidence level at the moment, scored another crucial goal, but also was not involved in too many minutes. I'm also pleased with this. So uh, them both uh, will, be, will, will be available also for training uh, tomorrow. So uh, definitely good news for them both and congratulations to them. I appreciate this is a question that's come up quite a lot this season, the future of Stuart Dallas. He spoke last night about his ambition to return playing this season. He also spoke about his future at the football club, mm -hmm. that he wants to stay. How much... Is that a consideration for you right now, Daniel, and what discussions are taking place, if any? Yes, Stuart is a, is a Leeds legend. Uh, he's done more for this club than um, um, many, many uh, players. Or I'm here with this club since since uh, several months, but he's here since several years. It has achieved so much for for this club, so he gets all the backing and all the time that he needs for his recovery. He's a top-class bloke. He's a top character, a top professional once he's fit, a really, really good, really, really good player. I would love uh, to have him fit back in my my dressing room, but it's also a pretty, pretty long-term injury, and we have to be respectful for this. So, no time pressure for him. He gets all the support, all the backing. He's working top-class professional with our rehab coaches, with our with our doctors. Yeah, sadly, um, yeah, you're not getting younger, and you have an injury CV, and you have to accept this. And we will see what the what the outcome is. So, uh, but he will get all the help and all support. And if there is a chance to to see Stuart back on the pitch, um, be sure that we are all greedy in order to make this happen. Uh, but it's too early to say if there is a chance. Anyhow, he gets all the time that he needs. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, you've obviously done this twice before in terms of going up as champions with Norwich. I mean, how does this sort of compare where you're at now? I mean, and when you consider when you know the, where the club was at when he first came in, could you have even envisaged being in this situation or even close to it? Like, I mean, literally top and having it in your own hands in terms of automatic promotion with eight games to go. Well, each and every uh, season and each and every club is also also different, and uh, also the group of the players for that. Um, yes, there are some similarities, and you can um, compare it, and and obviously. It was perhaps not realistic uh, in, in last July or August uh, to speak about to be in such a great position and not just a position but also what we've done in terms of performances and, and also the point tally that we have achieved is, uh, is quite remarkable. But um, yeah, this was also one of the reasons why I signed uh, the, the contract here for, for Leeds tonight because I know about the potential of this uh, of this club, uh, how big this uh, this club is, and and that you can achieve something special. And I always love challenges. I know it was more or less like a bit like a, a mission mission impossible, but it was a quite similar situation once uh, once I joined uh, Norwich uh, because I found a club um, in Norwich, yeah, somewhere in in court in, in mid table. Um, yeah, the 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 lads 
great lads and a good group of players, but sadly they were already on the on the way down. So many uh, the 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 team was a bit too old. We had no money. We had we had unbelievable financial pressure. Need to earn in the next transfer window uh, at least 25 million pounds, and this without. Uh, having proper players under contract and, and more or less many, many old players. We had to develop um, some young players no one has ever heard, uh, heard of and uh, we need to rely a bit on our academy and yeah, we ended then up to, to, to be allowed to play in the Premier League and, and no one would have predicted this once we joined uh, uh, Norwich and um, it felt a, obviously a different club and, 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 and also different setup to, to Norwich but also it felt a bit like a big, big challenge here at Leeds right now, and sadly there's not the guarantee that there will be the right, uh, the the same outcome uh, that we are allowed to to play in the uh, in the Premier League. Um, yes, but at least we have the chance uh, right now, and we are on a we are on a good path to develop the club and and uh, uh, to establish uh, the club rather sooner than later uh, again in the t in the top flight and to play there. Uh, but before we are allowed to, to speak about this, there's so much work to do. And right now, I'm, I'm not tempted to speak about the Premier League or being top of the table or what we can achieve. Right now, my whole focus is just on finding good, smart solutions for the for the next five or six days in order to play this uh, two games because they are priceless six points to play for uh, without more or less training sessions. And for that, my whole focus is just on this uh, on this weekend, Easter weekend. To grind, uh, to dig in, and to grind out somehow results, uh, and then afterwards we can concentrate on proper training um, sessions and the run in. But right now, my focus is just on the next two games. And can I just ask for an update on uh, Pascal Stroik as well? Is there any update on there in terms of, you know, how you're going to treat his injury into between now and the end of the season? Has anything changed really there? Yes, the decision was made. He had already his uh, surgery uh, on last Monday. It was a pretty long and complicated surgery, more than two and a half hours. So it went well. It's it's good. He already started uh, today his, uh, his first steps back into his rear process um so he will definitely miss out for the for the whole season and will be back uh, for uh, for pre-season um then in the summer hey daniel uh, sounds like junior is going to get back quite late then um are you happy to, to put sam barham in is he is he ready to go I don't want to speak too much about uh, about individual choices or who can come in uh, today because there's too much to consider at the moment. So we want to wait if, if really Conor Roberts is out properly. Yes, want to wait if, if uh, Willy Gnanto is available or not. We need to wait what what happens with Ilya Gruev. Uh, yeah, also possibility that we perhaps uh, also need Archie Gray then perhaps in the midfield position or whatever. So for that, it's it's a bit too early uh, to speak about who is really in the starting lineup. Um, right now, it's just up to to wait till all the players are there, till all the players are assessed, till I get the green lights from the doctor or sadly sometimes a red flag. Um, and then we can th uh, think and speak about the starting lineup. Uh, obviously, Seven was with us in the last two weeks. He had good training sessions, so he is prepared if I if I if I need him. But at the moment, it's really a bit too early uh, early to speak about because, yes, under normal circumstances, Junior wouldn't be possible for him to to start the game or to be in the squad because. Yes, he played just literally in the in the earlier uh, hours of this uh, of this morning due to the time difference, and he is just back uh, tomorrow late late uh, um, yeah more or less like in the late morning. But I can't rule out anything uh, at the moment uh, because we have to wait for the assessment. Uh, Watford, obviously Tom Cleverley's in there now, interim boss. What have you made with your assessment of of them, and, and what are their big dangers for you on Friday? Yes, first of all, it's uh, also, also a club with ambition and they've also played in the, in the last 10 years, uh, several years on, on Premier League level. Um, they have still lots of potential players, also experienced players, physical players, but also quality players. Um, and it's always, um, once a new manager comes in, the, the first games, um, it doesn't have to do with the quality of the former manager or whatever, but it's always like a, a feel of, of fresh air and everyone... For everyone, it's it's a new start, and everyone can impress. And they've used uh, also this effect in their in their last game was a pretty important win for them. And I think they will also highly be highly motivated uh, in order to use this in their in their home game. And uh, yes, obviously we also travel respectful because um, the good thing is a bit that it's more like the schedule is for everyone the same right now, but. Obviously, for them it was perhaps even a bit bit easier because there's a difference if you send 
whatever, six players away in international duties or just six players stay. So, um, and they don't have the additional travel. Uh, it's a home game. So I think they will be um, highly motivated in this home game to be there with back-to-back -back wins. And for that, we have to be uh, to be prepared for a really difficult challenge. And, and under the circumstances, we have to dig in and show great unity and great togetherness. I also am quite sure that we need our away supporters to carry us perhaps also during uh, challenging and, and difficult periods during this game because this is definitely an um, important game in order to grind out the result and to win as many points as possible. It sounds like you might need every member of your squad over the next yes. few days. Is Charlie Cresswell okay? He wasn't in the under-21 squad yesterday. Yes, he's, uh, he was one of the lads who arrived relatively uh, early this, uh, this morning. He's, he's fit and even did something uh, outside with us in the, in the training. So the good, good news was Charlie, he's definitely available uh, in case nothing happens in the next 24 hours. Given that your players will know your tactics inside out and your, your plan inside out, how much of this is about nerve and, and stamina now? Um, well, it, uh, it definitely helps that we are together right now since uh, since uh, since uh, such a long uh, such a long time, and we know what we what we want to do at this stage of the season. It's not like you have to start with the basics uh, again. It's more like to remind them as quick as possible in order to how we want to play and uh, also the way we want to play. Because obviously Wales or Finland or the under 21 games are different also in terms of base formation approach also different different tasks and for the for the young uh, for the for the individual players and um, we have to find a good scenario normally you do this with one or two training sessions to focus them again on, on uh, what you want to do right now we have to work a bit more on the tactic board with video meetings in order to remind them what they what they, they have to do uh, but we have also bright lads and and also good characters and i'm i'm quite confident also that we have also the chance right now with just pressing the button to deliver a proper proper performance and and also efficient performance this is what we're trying to do when you talk about pressing the button is is this the most reliable team or squad you've had when it comes to not just results but also performance levels i guess knowing what you're going to get from them and their ability to to do it week after week they were outstanding in the recent weeks and, and months, and I can't praise them uh, enough. I don't like to compare because I had also proper lads and, and, um, and, and great characters. When I think about Norwich with a pretty young side and, and a side of, of just free transfers, and they were also one of their our secrets was to stick together and to fight together. And uh, I don't want... Um, yeah, to feel them um, um, more or less um, to be misjudged. So they were also fantastic. But I have to say, this lads at the moment, it's a joy to work with them, and they are great, great characters. And the spirit in the dressing room is really um, extraordinary and, and outstanding. Otherwise, you can't could, can't be there with such a consistency in this uh, in this relentless le league. And uh, it's really a joy. And and um, yeah, really. I feel, I feel really honoured to be allowed to work with the slats each and every day.